Welcome back to another episode of the Minnesota Left Handers Podcast. I'm Brett. This is Nate. We got ourselves another designated event as a PGA Tour moves to the Wells Fargo Championship at Coil Hollow, North Carol Sh- Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, <laughs> Liv has the week <laughs> off, but Phil. Gives us everything we need this week as far as the live goes. Nate, as always, uh, I'm Brett. This is Nate. As always, we're here to give you guys the latest news on this week's golf. Golf stuff. Golf golf, everything. Every, everything you need to know right here. What do you got for us, Nate? It's great to be here. I have a question for you. We're going to have a little quick bit of trivia. If I was to say that I thought we were the biggest little podcast out there biggest little podcast in the world what is that a reference to biggest little biggest i got nothing is it the biggest small town in the world is that is it reno nevada the biggest biggest small town in the world i think they go by the biggest small town reno 911 we're the biggest little podcast in the world i don't maybe i don't i don't i don't i don't know maybe that's not quick time out time out do you see behind me do you see all this wiring that's in the wall? You wired a bunch of electrical. Dude. This is the the studio update. It is happening. <laughs> it is happening. Wiring's going in today, tomorrow. They're going to be done with that. Uh, Friday, sheet rockers are coming out, giving me a bid. Plumber should be out in the next week or two. Man, sh- it's flying. It's flying. I can see the finish line. So, so like... The first week of June, we can have a live podcast from the Minnesota Left Handers Studio. We're gonna get all our viewers in this room. And we're gonna do a live podcast together. That all would three be of us. Awesome. It's gonna be epic. That would be awesome. <laughs> all three of us. Speaking of that, like us, follow us, subscribe to us. You can find us at, at Minnesota Left Handers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and at br relander is it br relander on twitter as well um also tiktok uh i just don't run the tiktok so i didn't list it because it's kind of off my radar but you are in charge of that um it's all not that great content all the good contents right here on this podcast (laughs) but i was gonna say you cracked the algorithm you you i got a few tiktok i got a few (laughs) few good ones on there all right Enough, enough. Yeah, let's let's get into what the let's get into the Wells Fargo here. here. Quail Hollow in in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, so the shenanigans are continuing. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, we have Jason Day, I think, atop the power rankings at Quail Hollow this week. That is, it's like it's 2015 again. Uh, he's he's made quite the jump. I want to say at the beginning of the year, he was ranked 112th in the world golf rankings. Currently something like 34. I'd take that kind of jump in my life. Uh, So he's staying relevant. Top the, the power rankings out at quail hollow. We're back at quail hollow. We were not at quail hollow last year. It was at some course in Potomac, Maryland. Um, I don't remember the name of the course. doesn't matter. It was a one-off deal because the president's cup, was at quail hollow last year and so uh last september and so i'm assuming it was just a a prep thing they didn't want to have a tournament out there but some other notable names in maxwell maxwell homa my guy (laughs) who else tell me about patrick cantley with some news that just broke on him um i I don't know he's as slow as molasses is there as i don't know is there (laughs) Is there other news? Oh, that's right. There's yes, other news. Yes, there is um, other news. He has a new caddy. He uh, he went and stole Joe LaCava from the Tiger Woods. Um, I I don't know if there's I would much imagine, stealing there. But... <laughs> like offering and like, hey, Tiger, He's I a, actually want to work. I'd like to. A... You're, well, isn't Tiger's like laid up for. The rest of the year, we one. can't fish, finish 36 holes. I need to go play at golf. Right. So I'm going to go over here with this guy. And yeah, exactly. He's playing a handful of rounds a year. I think, I think if you had the opportunity to get on a bag of a guy who's on top of a lot of leaderboards, 
I think, you know, you jump at that chance. So Joe LaCava going to be with Patrick Cantlay for the time being and foreseeable future. I don't know who caddies for Tiger. I don't know that it matters. Uh, just some random Joe off the street would be Joe, random Joe LaCava. It'd be like Joe. a happy go more of that. Street. Just stand there and make sure I don't do anything stupid. Just, he shows up with the shit. <laughs> Shows up with a Ritz cracker as a ball mark and then eats it after after happy holes out. <laughs> so Jason Day, number one, Rory McIlroy, number two, Cameron Young, number three, Patrick Cantlay, four, Jordan Spieth, and then Victor Hovland, Mr. Norway himself. Is Rory really number two? Expert picks. That's where we're at. That We're not power rankings right now. This is ex, ex, expert picks. Expert picks. Okay. Okay. And it's it's nice to see that Rory's going to make it to a designated event. <laughs> I'm glad he did, he's going to be there. He did speak on that a little bit. Did you hear his I did his not reasoning? See the news. It was a uh, it was a mental health thing. He needed some time away and needed to be at home. And uh, I don't know. Right, I, right, what, right. Like I guess, I guess like how do you? We're we're just at a point where it's like okay, mental health. I, okay, I don't know what to say. But that that was the reason given, and so that's what we are. Going to go with um, should be a fun weekend. You... I mean, we got a lot of lot. I mean, everyone's going to be there. Anyone that's good, who's this guy? I've never heard of this guy, Cody Pearson. Uh, y- Pearson Cody. Pearson Cody. Pearson yeah. Cody. Yeah, yeah. Cody. His yeah. dad, grandpa. His grandpa was a tour guy. He actually is fresh off out of the uh, Texas Longhorns. It's his, it's his rookie season. So he would be, I don't know. I mean, it would be kind of cool to see a guy like that win, but not happening. I mean, if you go back to the president's cup, who played well, Max Homa was four. Um, I think Tony Finau played really, really well. Uh, and I'm just thinking because of because of Quail Hollow. So you go back to that event and kind of look at who who played well there. And Homa has, um, I think he won in 20. It might have been not happened in 2020, but I think he won in 2019 here. And he's the defending champ, even though again different course, but last year. But uh, so I don't know where he landed in an expert picks. Um, I'm just looking through the field List. right now. I had I had it up sharing the screen with the viewers here just to kind of go through some of the names. But obviously, there's sure. there's quite a few a few uh, uh, noticeable names here being a designated event. But I was just kind of it's amazing to me that I can just grab a name like Doc Redman and you can just instantly, oh yeah, he was ASU and Corn Ferry and came from here. His dad and grandpa and blah blah blah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Cool. I, I've never heard of the guy. <laughs> yeah, Doc. Doc's been around, but he's I. You actually, after all of those, you know, accolades you just gave me, and, and all of this you fount of useless. This guy. <laughs> I actually know nothing about Doc Redman. <laughs> you picked a guy that I like. I've heard of him, but I couldn't tell you. Like Pearson Cootie, I had I had some things to say, but but um, not Doc. Doc's Doc's been around. I think he probably has a, a tour win or two. I feel like he won something like the Zurich, one of those team events where it's just kind of a off season thing that you know nobody. So really how many golfers do we got in this field? I mean, there's got to be over a hundred golfers. Be it's guys. it's probably one fifty six would be my guess because they're not limited yet, are they? I don't think so. Not I think yet. the designated events are limited next year to to mm-hmm. seventy, and it's the whole no cut business. Yeah, so I mean, there's a ton of golfers. Like half these guys have never even freaking heard of. So for these guys to get their shot, I mean, how did the how did these guys even get in? That's crazy. But let, let's move on. Let's move on the power rankings, stuff that people are more interested in. Um, who you got yeah. for number one? Obviously, we kind of already went over this, but who you got for number one? I may have I may have played spoiler. I think uh, Jason Day. JD. Yep. It's when Quail Hollow first hosted the Wells Fargo as part of the '71. As a par 71 in 2018, he was the only golfer to hang up four sub-70s. He won by two. That piggybacked the T9 in 2017 PGA Championship. It's been a long time since both successes, but he's reconnected 
with similar form this season. He has been playing better. I, I guess I don't know he should uh, if, if he's quite ready, but <laughs> um, number two, I'm I'm interested in I do. <laughs> Two's got to be Max Homa. If it's, it is. I can't believe he wasn't one. Um, yeah, those expert picks, the he's fact that you didn't champ. list Max Homa's name. Yeah, and he's got a bunch of wins, and he plays well at Quail Hollow. I really think that he is, if he doesn't win, he's going to be right there. Can as Rory the, just go away? Yeah. This guy has not been good at golf. <laughs> I think we need to just let Rory be a golfer. If we just let Rory play golf and have Jay Monahan mean we? handle the media. This is him. He, he wants to be the poster <laughs> child of the – PGA versus live to her thing. Why don't you let Tiger take over that role? Because he sucks at golf now, anyways. Well, and he's just he's not playing. He might as well answer questions. I don't know. Maybe maybe he can just show up and be an ambassador for the game. Maybe maybe that is the answer. I don't I don't know. That might be best because or really seriously, or Jay Monahan could step up and answer some questions and let Rory play freaking golf. Give that me your top give me your top four golfers for this 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 for this match. event. Yep. Um, do you want me to go first? I I, th- I think you know. I think you know where I'm at with, uh, with my one. I I do think it's Max Homa. Two, seriously, uh, Rory. Um, because he's one here. Um, this is not a Nate's no names because I don't. I was not prepared to answer a Nate's no names, but I wouldn't be, uh, you know, opposed to seeing Tom Kim play he, he had a good record in that rider or in the president's cup and i think you're forgetting um, a big name tony fino i don't know i don't know who you're talking about no i'm, I'm going number one victor hovland number two tony fino number three max homa and number 10 ricky fowler so i actually have an article up right now <laughs> about ricky fowler like I, the, the viewers can't see my screen but uh, the headline is Wells Fargo Championship. Can Ricky Fowler spoil Roy McIlroy's return to the PGA Tour? <laughs> spoil Rory's? You mean spoil Tony Finau's back to back? Ricky Fowler is still at risk of losing his PGA Tour card at the end of the season, and he narrowly missed out on qualifying for the Masters last month. That, he said, sucked. It was a bummer. I ended up watching a decent amount, as everyone, as I think everyone does. But that was some motivation to be back. We were close, but I put myself in too big of a hole to get back there. He hasn't won since 2019, but he's currently 53 in the World Golf Rankings. That's up 96 spots from his lowest point um, of 145. I don't know that that adds up to 96, but it's a lot. It's a lot of points. Um, Finally, for the first time in a long time, Rory, Rory, geez, Fowler is in a pretty good spot. I need to, to try harder this year. I just, it's, he's just like burned into my brain. I've been working my ass off and would have liked to have been in this position the last few years, not necessarily gone through any of those slumps or whatever you want to call it, but definitely nice to be in a good position moving forward and with the changes the tour has made. So I think he's doing good things. He just needs to break through. So I, I don't know if that was a tongue in cheek pick on your part, but I'm with Rory. Rory, jeez, Ricky, on this, I can't talk. God, I no, can't you even... can't talk. You just love burned Rory. In my brain. He's burned in my brain because he's you actually like him one so much, here. Why don't you marry him? <laughs> um, no, not happening. Yes, Victor Hovland, I think, has got the best shot. Max Homa, number two, having the best shot. I don't think Jason Day makes top five. If anything, Patrick Cantlay is going to play better than him. Tony Finau is up there, and so is Ricky Fowler. I like your Tom Kim pick, though. What does what does it say about the PGA Tour power rankings if Jason Day misses the cut? Do we have to disregard those power rankings from here on out? Ooh, I think you're onto something. Hey, what do you get this President's Cup link for? <clears throat> That's just, I think, a lot of the stats that we just talked about. Just that Quail Hollow held the. Um, scroll to individual records yeah president the quill hollow held the president's cup last year so it was worth kind of taking a look at to look at their individual player records um patrick cantley was three and one tony fino was three and one max was four and oh uh xander shoffley was three and one jordan spieth was five and oh justin thomas was four and oh 
So like they're those are the names that you expect to see anyway. It wouldn't be a surprise to see Jordan Spieth at the top of this leaderboard, you know? Moving on. This is what he is, but... piece of paper. Uh, scorecard. You got me a nice scorecard here, dude. 2021. 20, nice. Yeah, they don't have... <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have anything else. It was a... But That's it's so actually good. at least... It's the PGA Tour scorecard because what happens so often is we play these courses and all I can find is like the member scorecard and, you know, they got some par four or some par five that's playing as a par four. So the par is totally different and the yardages are totally wrong because, you know, they back them up to the other county just to make teeing grounds for these guys. But um, 7,500 yards, uh, 35, 36. So the front nine has two par threes, one par five. Nothing stands out as far as length or anything like that, but just a good, solid golf course. It's been on tour for for many, many years. Um, I don't know anything anything stand out to you. That fifteenth is five seventy seven, and then a five oh six par four to back that up. It's long that, on the back, and then they got like back a four nine. four forty six on the par five on the front. Yeah, that back nine is not messing around. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much a recap on the Wells, the Wells for anyone looking for the information on that. Moving on from here, we'll recap Mexico, um, talk a little bit of news. That's my favorite part of these, these, these podcasts are talking the, the news for the week, but let's talk about yeah. the Mexico open. Who won? Yeah. That you one? sent me the, the thumbnail for today's. Pull it up on uh, episode and you got Tony Fino as Mr. Nice Guy. Tell me more about this. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my Twitter here. I have a video here of Tony Fino, and I was I just happened to be at work and I was just watching this, um, and I and I tweeted it out to you. Have you seen this? Uh, have you seen this interview at Minnesota Left Handers? <laughs> Not as nice in person. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> The That's reason being is because we were at, you. yeah, inside joke, we were at the 3M Open. Tony Finau, we just happened to catch him on the backside where no fans were at. It was basically me, Nate, and his group of guys on the f- second day, right? We were there the second day? I think so. And I'm standing right at the gate. Tony Finau's walking by. Hey, Tony, what do you got uh, for advice for us uh, bogey golfers? And he just kind of blew you off i was like, invisible this guy didn't even know i had a podcast and i liked him I know. <laughs> if he knew you had a podcast he would have answered because that's content uh no that's um he kind of looked at you gave you a weird look and you know sped up and walked away. maybe it was faster. the question it was a dumb question i know god i'm such an idiot you froze Froze. You froze, but it was it was it was fine. I'm sure, I'm sure he seems like a really nice guy. You got to be a nice guy to have five kids and a wife that travel all over the freaking world with you. So, yeah, he's he's a nice guy. Um, I, I'm I'm rooting for the guy. I really hope he can get a win in a challengeable field. Okay, you know, it's time. having the pressure of of a designated event where all the golfers are there golfing against him and him coming out with a win. That's what I want to see. Not one of this these clip. Hidden giggles. <laughs> it's a national open. This was a national open. <laughs> Don't shortchange it by calling it a hit and giggle. Um, Excuse me. Uh, nice push. Um, the I don't know that I saw this video, but as I was prepping a half hour ago, I watched this whole post post game press conference. Was it, is this from that? Uh, no, it's just an uh, e- inter- interview on ESPN. I don't think it's actually a post okay. one. It's just a like an interview just with like one of the ESPN guys because it's got him in a side by side with another guy from ESPN. So I don't think it was a post game. Oh, I but doubt it. It was an actual ben interview. Gets, but... So yeah, good for him. Mexico Open, uh, second place. Obviously, he had the Top Gun, uh, John Rahm, the defending champ. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason why he was there. And why he's not golfing in this next event would be my guess. <clears throat> and this is this seems like a, a good week to take off. I feel like 
this is probably a, a smart move. Rom is Rom seems to be doing everything right. Where we look at Rory and we question everything that's happening between you. Know, why'd you take the first one off? Now you have to miss this other one. Rom thing he seems to be firing on all cylinders making the right choices doing all the good stuff so i totally get why he's skipping this to prep for the pj championship here in a couple weeks otherwise uh in the mexico open there was really nothing brandon Wu number three akshay bahata akshay bahati uh by the way lefty emilio uh emiliano Guerrero. Um, but I mean, I, just, I don't even know half these people like Cameron champ tied eight, but that, other than that, you got, you got nothing. So, uh, moving on Pick piece of paper, couple it up. Yeah. Toss it out the window. Let's gotta, move on to the other stuff. Uh, Joel, do you have a Kyla? basketball hoop? Yeah. Do you have a basketball hoop over a, over a garbage can? You just sit over here and just, I can't wait for this to be done, dude. We're moving on three pointers. We're moving on. Things are coming around. At this uh, place here, I'm gonna insulate the ceiling so I can scream and yell. Yeah. Yes, we're gonna yeah. be very excited. We're gonna get fired up in the podcast room. Um, the the Joe Lacava thing. I don't know. We talked about it. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. We what can else move to on from that. that. Yeah. Got uh, tired of being I, a loser. Is it time to talk Philly Mick? Uh, either Philly Mick or your surprise. Now let's let's end with the son, father, the father son. son thing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So. Philly Mick got into it the other morning. Um, <laughs> some good morning entertainment and on the, uh, on the old tea machines. Um, oh, I, the go. link that's there is not great, but I've got a couple of couple of them here. Um, somebody posted. Oh, I think it was like Live Nation Insider or whatever. And Colt Nost. Are you familiar with Colt Nost? Is it like Colt if, McCoy's brother? No. Okay. It's no, not. then I have I, I, I'm not sure that as a parent, naming your son Colt and then you're his, making his brother's name also Colt would be good. I'm not sure that that's a good move. So, no, that definitely not, brothers. Colt Nost was a professional Please golfer for list them when you get a chance. many years. Um, he was a fine player. I mean, he never had any huge wins, but, um, you know, he made it to the BJ Tour, played well has since left he is with the cbs broadcast team he does like he'll like walk with the players so he's not next to jim nance up in the tower but he's like he's got boots on the ground right um boots on the ground and (laughs) and uh pretty active on social media as well and someone some live insider account posted something about the world golf rankings and live shouldn't said, have to adjust for the official world golf rankings. The official world golf ranking should have to adjust for live 50% of the world's top golfers plan live. And it's the OWGR's responsibility to adequately rank the world's top golfers. And so Colt responds to any number of random Joe's here. Serious question. Why are y'all upset about the OWGR? If you knew the criteria when you were starting a tour, why wouldn't you just meet it? And that lit a fire under none other than Phil Mickelson, who got his thumbs moving and had this to say. Colt, it's not our job. It's the OWGR's job to rank all the players in the world. Maybe they can do their job and figure out like they do for every or for multiple tours with hundreds of players, not even close to as good. But that would hurt the PGA Tour's revenue from CVS, so the, uh, CBS, so the leaders won't. And Colt responds, Respectfully, why did you never lobby for world golf, for world ranking points from the start? Why did you not argue for points when you played on the PGA Tour champions? And Phil said, respectfully, I don't need to. I don't need OWGR points, nor do I care about them for myself. I'm in three majors for the next 13 years, and I'll you know kind of listed his accolades, accolades there. And yeah, yeah. He's 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 kind of exempt for a while. Um, and he makes a good point, and I think this is the one. Then they go back and forth more. I'm not going to read the whole thing because why would I read Twitter when people could just do that? But here's one that I thought was interesting. It was addressed being ranked by the OWGR, and it was made clear that the heads of the World Golf Rankings would do everything in their power to shut Liv down by any and all means. Curious why you think Liv is the only tour not worthy of points despite so many great players. Because it's a threat is not a valid reason. And so I... I 
to that point, I, I get it. Because the World Golf Ranking points count for, like, the Sunshine Tour, which is a small little nothing tour through South Africa. They got hooked into, Liv got hooked into, what was that tour? Some tour through, we talked about it on our podcast. I don't even know. It, it went away. Um, some little nothing tour, the Mina Tour or something like that, through the Middle East where they could get enough events to get world golf rankings like we don't even know the names of all these tours that come for world golf ranking points and the tour that has cameron smith brooks kepka dustin johnson bryson DeChambeau, phil mickelson doesn't even get ranking like i it's it they're doing everything in their power to not give these guys rank and i yep i can hear that argument it colt's argument is coming from a place of assuming goodwill um, in everyone. You know, they're trying, but you're just not meeting the standards. Like, no. The World Golf Ranking people are making a concerted effort to keep you off the rankings. That's what I think. Here's an interesting tweet. And again, I know we're just reading Twitter and stuff like that. I'll concede that Liv is the second strongest golf tour presently. That's really not up for rational debate. Imagine if the college football rankings decided they weren't going to rank the second best conference over a petty political dispute and block them from the national ta- uh, title game. That's where golf is at. Golf and the OWGR are the laughing stocks of the sports world right now. I think that's that's kind of true. Um, read that last part about the other example, like they, they, the football one. Yeah, imagine if the college football rankings decided they weren't going to rank the second best conference over a petty political dispute and blocked them from the national title game. Yeah, so like the SEC doesn't get ranked. ACC, yeah, Big Ten, yeah. yeah. Big Ten, you guys you got too much going on up there. We're gonna we're gonna move on from out here, which I mean pretty much it just happens doesn't. anyways, but it doesn't doesn't quite make sense. Side note, Brooks Kepka having a baby. Going to be a dad. Yeah. Pretty Did you see what he's going to name it? <laughs> Where do you say it? This is just this is just because I don't want to say no yet. I whatever it is. He said if it's a girl, they're going to name it Olivia and they can go by Liv. <laughs> That's awesome. So, sticking it. Sticking it. Turning the knife. All right. With the Thank remaining you. time we got here, let's go over your your little treat for the uh, viewers right now. Right now, we are in qualifying time for the U.S. Open. Uh, and there's, there's regional qualifying, and then there's sectional qualifying, and there's a handful of spots. I mean, there's, a, there's sites all over the nation that have these qualifying. Um, somewhere in Minnesota just had it. Guy plays out of Riverwood as an alternate. So, like, if somebody can't play in the sectional qualifying, he'll bump in, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's it's the U.S. Open for that reason. It just any, anyone and everyone can play. Uh, June or first week of June is the sectional qualifying. But a bunch of regionals have, have gone off. One of the names that got through um, the, the regional qualifying is Kucher, as in, Matt Kuchar's 15-year-old son. Yeah, why do we have to put the title like that? Why can't we say Cameron Kuchar, Matt Kuchar's son? I just said it that way because I forgot his first name. Instead, we're going <laughs> to dis- discredit this man. No, that's the headline. Matt Kuchar's 15-year-old son cruises. Why Is can't it? it be Cameron Kuchar's? I didn't Cameron even notice. Kuchar, 50-year-old son of Matt Kuchar cruises. You know what I mean? Like totally yeah. just discredits the kid from any talent given it all to his dad. I didn't have this up. I forgot that I did this. And I, I was thinking on the fly just now, like, how no, can but I that's, say this? That's without... the title. That is the, yeah. that's the literal title of the, of the article here. And so it got me thinking, what other father-son duos out there? Like, who are the greatest father-son duos? And then we can He's... narrow it down who played together or were, like, active professionally at the same time. John Daly and John Daly. John, <laughs> I mean, okay, we we started with the best. It only it can only go downhill from here, <laughs> right? John, John, and Little John. We could be like uh, Tiger Woods and his daddy. Who's 
well, no, or what's his kid's name? Charlie. Charlie, who's – but they're not – he's not a pro yet. And no. I actually, I think Little John is still in college. Correct. But we we kind of did a little bit of actual prep work for this. The first one that came to mind for me man. was Archie and the, the Manning brothers. I mean, that was like the first one that came to mind to me. And then another surprising one that kind of came to mind to me uh, was uh, – Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes Sr., who was a pitcher for the Twins. Yep. Yes, that was different sports, oddly enough, but that's not totally arms. uncommon. Um, in our prep work, we talked about hockey a little bit. Uh, it's the Howes, Gordy and Mark Howe, were, were both, they played together in, I think they actually played on the same team, like the Hartford Whalers in like 1984 or something. Um, I mean, golf such or golf, uh, hockey such a generational sport. I mean, it's it's not uncommon. Like uh, right now, who's in the work is Matt Cullen. He's head coach of the Bantam Double A, um, Bantam Double A program in Moorhead, and his kid plays on the team. So it's it's not going to be it's not unlikely that you'll see his kid playing in the NHL at some point. He's coaching Bantams right now. <laughs> Double A, yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's I'm sure he'll move up uh, to to varsity or JV after his kids move up. You know, just because. Yeah, they they lost. His hockey knowledge? They lost to Edina in the in the finals. This yeah, year. well, their coach is a former North Star, so you know that doesn't that's not surprising. Great. Um, but like Dale Earnhardt Senior and Dale Junior. That was a great one. Yes, yes, I like that one. That's a Griffey. Griffey, um, Griffey Sr. and Griffey Jr. Uh, who else? Um, Andretti. A couple Andrettis, I'm sure, in, in the in the racing world were were together. And then for all we know, I mean I, I mean it does it does sound this way, but LeBron's son is probably gonna play with him. I think LeBron's gonna try to hang on to whatever shred of a career he has. What about left the balls? To play with his son. I don't think his dad was. I don't think their dad was a pro, was he? He wasn't. He played college though. He, I think he played college, but I think the the kids, I don't even know Lonzo, and I don't know. Isn't his? Isn't dad Lavar, like that guy from Reading Rainbow, Lavar Burton? <laughs> Reading <laughs> Rainbow. <laughs> that was that was the show in the mornings, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. You just look at it and you go, you could see. And actually, we, we look at the golf world. We forgot Bob Tway, Kevin Tway, Bill Haas, and Jay Haas. I didn't forget. I just um, didn't know. Oh, I, I forgot. I forgot. But, the, you know, there's a handful of names who have have done that in golf as well. So, I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to follow Cameron Kuchar. What about, there's, God, there's a defensive end in the NFL that's dad played the NFL too. It was really good. Jared Allen. Yeah, no, he was good, but I don't think he had a son that played or a dad that played. I'm thinking like Matthews or something like that. Oh, Clay. Yeah. His dad. Clay's dad. I saw that too, yeah. His, His dad, dad played, did too. Played in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was, I mean, that's cool. That was fun. I yeah, did for the two viewers that are still left. Matt, Matt Kuchar, and we'll, we'll kind of see how this... I guess it works out. I, I don't suspect that Cameron Kuchar will get through, but who could say? Who knows? It'd be kind of a cool thing for them. Um, any golf on the horizon for you? You know, with this nightmare going on behind me, uh, I don't think there's going to be much of that going on. And here, let me pause just for a quick second. Um Golf, no. Um, I I'm, I just got all these projects going on. I got to get a deck up. I got to finish the basement. Hockey playoffs are going on, and these are the the playoffs are just absolutely insane right now. Who would have thought Seattle Kraken? Oh my God! Who would have thought that the New Jersey De- New Jersey Devils would have? Oh my God! It's just it's insane. Pan- Panthers take out the Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins in Game Seven. 59 seconds left. They put one in, and then they win it in overtime. Oh, my God. It's crazy. 
feels like I'm in Boston suddenly. Jesus. No, I'm not mean enough. Did, did you did you see how many goals Ottinger gave up in their first game? Four in the first period. <laughs> it's brutal. the most out of any game so far in this this uh um this year's playoffs. Four the goals. guy stands on his head against us and he just I'm telling you, we always lays run an into egg. the hot goaltender. And then there's like zero goals and it goes into overtime. Like from there on. Yeah. I I don't, I don't even know. And I, right that's now, my... um, and I don't think this shows if I do a, a screen share. It doesn't. But um, I got uh, Vegas and Edmonton up right now. And this has been a pretty decent game. There's been some uh, pretty, good, uh, pretty good hockey. I think this is going to be a good series to watch here. Okay. Edmonton's down our... two to three. And they were first ones to put one on the board, but uh, Vegas followed right back up like a minute later with another goal. So it's it's been pretty back and forth. Good game. Is that Connor Connor McDavid? Yep. Edmonton. Yeah. Yep. Dry cycle. Yep. I mean, they they got a stacked team. I just don't know. Typically in NHL playoffs, it all comes down to the hot goaltender. I mean, you got to have a hot goaltender. And I thought ottinger was going to be that guy but after watching them lose game one in dallas against a seattle team that's just paper clips duct tape and band-aids put together it's it's <laughs> it's just awesome to watch yeah and that's why i like playoff hockey oh my god because their ability hockey seems separate from the other sports their ability to find that extra gear in the playoffs Oh, is, it's is is a whole different level. And to be able to like switch out every, you know, if they want to get off the ice in twenty seconds, I mean that can happen. So the game's just playoff hockey. You can't touch the puck without getting hit, and it is just so fast paced. It's it's insane how fast these guys can move, you know, north to south, east to west, and in, in, in hockey, and and just take hits and keep on doing it. Seven games, dude. Florida played. Uh, the the Hurricanes they lost or not the Hurricanes Florida played uh, 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 Toronto Maple Leafs and they beat them after they had just won a game seven against Boston and then they had one day of rest and then right back to to hockey and and went into uh, um, Toronto and beat Toronto in Canada I mean it's 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 amazing it's it's quite the game it's it's got to be one of the best playoffs in sports history i mean that's why that that trophy is so damn big well i think that'll do it for the minnesota left-handers hockey pod <laughs> um <laughs> hockey's my passion man next to golf it is and, and you you could i mean i'm sure we could do episodes on on the nhl playoffs so uh we are running short on time um quick plug here state lefty open Sign up, email Minnesota left at gmail.com. Tell all your lefty buddies, let's make it happen. Hit them far, hit them straight, and we will see you next time. Like, subscribe, follow.